Good morning. The entire world is now aware of the rare earth metals problems and that China dominates the supply chains for nearly all of them. And each one of those rare earths, along with the critical minerals and metals, presents enormous challenges to Western countries who want to bring those supply chains back. And even saying that requires some caveats, some conditions, because for many of those metals, we never had them in the West, and we still don't. We're looking at gallium today, which is not a rare earth metal, but it's a critical one. And as we go through, consider that the problems we've got for doing anything about China's supply chain dominance in gallium, they're similar to all the other metals. China has a virtual monopoly in gallium, which is a big problem for the Pentagon and weapons makers. This report came out at about the same time Beijing cut off exports of gallium for dual use purposes. So too little too late, Washington and NATO realized they need to de-risk their supply chains. China produces 98% of the world's supply of gallium. And that derives from where gallium is hauled out of the ground. Gallium is a byproduct of processing bauxite, which is the primary source for aluminum ores. China has a huge aluminum mining and processing industry, and the Western world does not. After bauxite is mined and then smelted, it's then that the engineers can extract the gallium. But the objective for the bauxite mining is aluminum. Years ago, Beijing required aluminum miners to extract the gallium instead of just tossing it away. And in 10 years, Chinese production of gallium went from 22 tons to 444. 444 tons doesn't seem like a lot. And compared to the aluminum, it's nothing. But that 20 times increase in gallium supply blew up the market everywhere else. And suppliers in Europe and Kazakhstan shut down. And China was left as the world's only producer. We see in these two charts the problem. The first is how much aluminum is produced by countries not named China. Since 2005, aluminum production for the rest of the world combined is around 25 million tons per year. China, since 2005, went from 8 million tons to over 40 million tons, up five times. On this chart is the global production of gallium. Rest of the world again in blue, dropping to about zero, with China going the other way. So now China has it all. The smelters that used to go after gallium in NATO countries have all closed down, and the Pentagon is racing around looking for more. Weapons makers need gallium to power their semiconductors for missile defense, radar, electronic warfare, and communications gear. And that's all because gallium has chemical properties that are ideally suited to those applications. High temperatures, high voltages, high frequencies are no problem for gallium-based chips. Applications with gallium compounds have been developed and applied to military and civilian sectors. Gallium arsenide is used in GPS systems, precision guided munitions and smartphones. Gallium nitride is needed for the most advanced radars, stealth and missile defense systems, and in US Navy ships themselves. Civilian companies need the chips for 5G towers and solar power and electric vehicles. And these are for the same reasons that the Pentagon likes them, for the high performance applications, efficiency and durability, System by system, gallium is everywhere. Gallium chips power dozens of RF systems and radars, optoelectronics for lighting, LIDAR and lasers, power equipment, spacecraft, fast charging, data centers, power grid management, and clean energy. When we flip through all these applications that require gallium to work, 
and we understand that in order to build them, we need China either to sell them to us or figure out how to make it ourselves, we see a chicken and the egg problem. Gallium comes from bauxite mining and smelting. And the reason to do that is for the aluminum industry. And we don't have one. Once upon a time, the United States was one of the biggest aluminum producers in the world. 28 aluminum smelters in the United States, open for business for decades, but one by one they shut down. Here is a chart of U.S. aluminum production, the green bars, and in black, the smelter shutdowns. Production peaked in 1980 and has gone towards zero, slowly but surely ever since. So here's another chart, U.S. and China compared the percentage of global production moving decisively in opposite directions. And remember that getting gallium separated from the rest of the bauxite ores was never an industry in the United States anyway. Another one for China versus the rest of the world. And not a lot of good news there for Pentagon contractors. China, India, and Russia combined for about 70% of aluminum production and should go without saying how the BRICS countries have no interest in helping NATO build more missiles and stealth planes. Beijing understood early on what their giant aluminum operations meant for gallium and what gallium means for everything that will power the rest of this century. In their five-year plan from 2021, Gallium was a key part of the strategy to challenge the West technologically. Today, that race is over. China now does enjoy first mover advantages in all those technologies. For advanced industrial applications and military grade equipment where money is no object and engineers demand gallium instead of silicon, China has vaulted ahead of the US, Europe and Japan. Then came the export bans, which deny Chinese gallium to anyone that might be building anything for the Pentagon. And weapons makers and the heads of civilian companies are waking up to that vulnerability. Of all the metals, gallium ranks the highest in terms of both economic vulnerability and disruption potential. Because so much of our expensive stuff relies on gallium and China can easily shut it off. The report concluded with a series of recommendations, and the first is to invest in gallium extraction and refining in the United States, supported by the Department of Defense. And here we might wonder if these analysts read their own report. Nothing happens with gallium outside of aluminum mining and smelting, and nobody is doing that anymore in the United States. Here's that chart again. It may be that there are giant piles of process ore sitting around these abandoned smelters because nobody got the gallium out of it, and maybe that's the plan. But again, that's something our engineers have never done before either. Remember that Beijing required its aluminum smelters to go after the gallium, and the reason they did so was because it's hard work. And at the time, even Chinese aluminum producers didn't think it was worth their time. It's a different world now. This is Beijing. Be good.